Izzy Twitter Helper. is suspended for a month this now. This is Izzy Gutierrez. I'm cl- yes, this is my Instapot behind us, if you want to look at that. Because I, I hey. understand that pot roast is a big point of discussion here on the internet now. What's going on with that, cast? Shout out Instapot, man. I Like, if we were to this, if this were like, I'd say Instapot over, can you even see this? No, wrong way. Over <laughs> air fryer. If we were to do like a, um, a, versus. a, a list... Yeah, I think Instapot t- like beats out air fryer. Can I use the air fryer more? <laughs> I think but we were doing kitchen what, scenes today. I'm sorry. <laughs> what the Instapot delivers outweighs what the air fryer delivers. I what is your open handle, is he? Here. Tell is your- Gutierrez, would you like a PS5? <laughs> Welcome to Debatable. I, you know, I've literally almost said welcome to Highly Questionable because we were just talking about that and we're in the kitchen. Welcome to Debatable. The, uh, what is it? What is it Pablo calls it? Fake internet TV show? I don't really know what those nomenclatures are, but I do have to ask you, why is everybody talking about pot roast on the internet? Like, I don't know why. I don't know either because pot roast is bomb. I think and somebody was right trying to is- slam the idea of that being a good dinner to come home to. And I think that's ridiculous because the pot no roast lies. is amazing. Let me ask you this though: How often, if, y- if y'all as pot roast enthusiasts, how often are you mixing in pot roast to the rotation? Is that a once a week thing? Is that a once a month thing? Is it a special occasions no. thing? To me, it's a little too much effort to do it right. So it's more like a once a season thing, maybe three or four times a year if I'm lucky. See, this is what I'm well, saying. Pot roast is. Go ahead. No, Clay, I just find it really odd because right now is peak pot roast season. <laughs> I mean, it is February. It is peak pot roast season. And you guys are going to come with the pot roast slander February 8th? Like, you know, out of spite, I'm going to make some pot roast today. I don't know. I, don't, I can't think of a time where I ever, like, pot roast exists in the world. It's like there, but I don't know that I've ever heard anybody say, I'd really mm. love a pot roast. Or, man, you remember that pot roast that Betty made last week? Like, I've never heard anybody actually discussing it. It's just kind of always around. And I've never made it, and my mom didn't make it either. Neither did my dad. So. I mean, I wish it was around right Two now. Two Americans. Like- Is that what they mean by that? I, I, no. <laughs> What's the first topic, Alvaster? All right, first topic from someone who almost definitely does not eat pot roast. No way. <laughs> Do Tom Brady's comments make you think he could actually come out of retirement? Okay, so TB12, Tom Brady, the greatest of all time, the GOAT, whatever you want to call him. He retired a while back and instantly got his news cycle jammed up by the fact that he was A, scooped, and B, other news came about, and therefore the window of time that we talk about the greatness and the legacy was slammed shut. So, as a result of this, of course, he needed to put himself back in the headlines, and he said, quote, I'm just going to take things as they come. I don't know how I'll feel six months from now. Okay, now, there's two things to be gleaned from this. Never say never is the other thing that he said. There's two things to be gleaned from this, one of which I already stated, Izzy, the other of which is to take this seriously. Are you taking this seriously from our resident Florida expert on the program? <laughs> Uh, I wore my most island-like shirt for you, Clinton. <laughs> island boys! Yes. Um, look, I, I appreciate Tom Brady for, you know, having a podcast that he needs to put, you know, good information and good content on even after he announced his retirement. Um, but, I, I mean, this is what everybody says, nor, but I don't believe it for a second because let's just play this out, okay? How's he going to feel six months from now? Well, I believe that's August, which is Older. during training camp, is it not? Yeah. <laughs> right. And so you, for these six months, he's not just going to be sitting around waiting to see what he feels like. If he's going to play NFL football, he's got to prepare for NFL football for the next however, or, you know, probably take one week, one week off to go to the Derby. Right. And then the rest of the time training and see how he feels come August when he is in great shape. So and if that were to happen, you know, we'd know ahead of time. So I would say the one thing that made me question the whole idea or for that weekend, while the, the story was just kind of floating in midair, nobody was uh, confirming it, if you will. Uh, it made me wonder if he could change his mind, not necessarily for a spite season, but just because it's the worst possible time to make that decision right after you get done with your season. But I think enough times passed where he's not changing his mind six months from now. That's definitely not going the opposite direction. Cass? I mean, I... I... Let's just say this first. I don't believe him. I don't think he's coming back. But I will say that I have um, 
sympathy because or em- no sympathy for 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 the struggle he's going through um like i have a pair of pants in my closet right now that i wore in high school because it's like i don't want to get rid of it because i feel like maybe just maybe i could fit back in them one one day so like i can't really i, I have that issue tom brady's trying to say goodbye to basically his whole first life so i get that but he is stringing the game along right now, you know, as he's searching for his next options. Like, you're too old, Brady, to be playing these games. Communicate clearly what you want because I will say this, you don't want the game to break up with you. Like, you're too old <laughs> to have the game break up with you. It just this won't is, be that pretty. So if you come back point. and you're waiting, you're like, you're, you're just keeping the game as an option right now and – creating like um this this confusing situation with the game um you don't want it to break up with you at at 59 years old you don't want you you just don't want that (laughs) that was very insightful on a lot of levels well beyond football (laughs) alabaster put up put up a tremendous piece of a stat stat work here brady in his 20s 21,564 yards and 147 touchdowns brady in his 40s 22,938 yards and 168 TDs. We get it. The production yes. has been there. But I think to Cass's point, this is like, do you remember when Jay-Z said he retired, but then like put out one song a year for like the next five years just to kind of like hang around? And it was always like, what, what, what's, what's actually happening here? Your point about situationships is exactly right. Because honestly, like real talk, Izzy, my concern always was with Tom Brady was that one day – he was going to get knocked down and just not get back up. You know what I'm saying? And I don't want to have to see that happen. I mean, not because I have some yeah. big Jay-Z's standard in my mind. not getting hit in the head multiple times. Right. You know what I'm saying? But, like, I don't have some big standard in my head of Tom Brady as some big hero. I just mean for his personal health. You know what I'm saying? There could just be that one day, Izzy, where if you're right, if you're not – I mean, if you're not preparing for six months, you're not trying to catch Aaron Donald, you know what I mean, in the ribs. Right. And the next thing you know, you can't walk for a week. A week. You know, and what does that good. have to look like? Because, like, look, this idea that you retire and then all of a sudden you're sitting at home hanging out with your kids the entire time, for somebody like Tom Brady, who's just going to be pulled in a million different directions, regardless of whether he's playing or not, it's kind of nonsense. Like, the one thing that I could force, I could see him saying, uh, maybe changing his mind after, let's say, a month and saying, hey, I'm not really getting to spend time with my kids. I'm not really getting to spend time with my wife. I'm flying all over the place. I might as well just, if I'm going to be away from them, might as well go ahead and play football again and find the right team, the right situation. But the idea that he can just sort of parachute in onto a team, not even in, in the season. I'm talking even before the season when he has had no say in any sort of personnel and any sort of offense like that for a control freak like, a control freak like Tom Brady seems absolutely implausible unless it's one of those two teams that he is super familiar with Tampa and New England but are they going to be in great positions where he's going to swoop in and say hey let's go win a Super Bowl this year no I feel like Tom Brady's the one guy that's got like you know how people say oh I'm going to go home and I'm going to play with my kids like I feel like he could go home and play with his kids and have a full workout regimen that might actually keep him in shape while he does that he's got his kids doing one thing he makes sure he's actually getting his exercise in while they play he could have a whole system like that. He's the one guy that's just anal enough that that actually both yeah. things might actually be able to happen. That's just me. It kind of reminds me, though, that. if you remember. Sorry, Cassie. Go ahead. No, go ahead, Izzy. You were on I was a roll. just to go. remember, I was going to make a Friends reference, which is probably going to make Clinton yeah, angry. I know, I know. I've never <laughs> seen that show. I don't watch that. I've never seen that show. Sorry. You've like, never not seen not once? It. You didn't, like, stumble upon it on once TBS? Once again, let me explain this. I'm a black person from a black city with two black parents, and we did not watch that show. It just wasn't a thing that mattered to me. I mean, that's just what do you want me to say. Sorry. Hey, well, I'm not going to make the reference in because I already I don't. I, I, I mean, it just – this is a separate discussion, <laughs> but, like, people always ask me, that, like, how is that possible? I'm like, I, I just watch other stuff. It's okay, you know? No, no, I'm not saying that you needed to be a loyal person and, like, ask for the, the, the Rachel haircut in middle school. I just wanted to know, I mean, you hadn't seen a episode. Like, I mean, it's been Not on, even I, just I curious at this, I couldn't all name these people. You, I couldn't name you all the characters on the show, not even close. Okay, but that's that's different than, like, you know, choosing to one day watch one episode or, you know, Living one section of an episode. Is the show that it's hard Living to disprove that, but too? I don't really believe you. Like, I believe you could have named all I can name you really the tried, But we're not going to do that to people. We're not going to do that to people I can't name here. the characters, is what I'm saying. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. No, but you're proud of that, which is fine. It's fine, yeah. 
Living single. It's still the idea. I'm still mad. What's up, Alan Baxter? Oh, okay. I, okay. You, you see as, what I'm saying, guys? Uh, that's the, that's, a, big, the that's a bigger conversation. Show, I do have a question. What's up? What about the 49ers? Why can't he just parachute into the 49ers and win a championship next year? Trey Lance oh. probably won't be ready. It's not a bad idea. And is he's from that area? I mean, that would be sort of the that would be the full homecoming if that happened. I don't hate that idea. Yeah. I don't hate that idea. Like, I just wonder, so like, what you're going to so if he retires, like, what, <laughs> what do you talk about? Like, when you're done, like, if you've got these kids that are, you know, in the range of, like, you know, range of, like, 7 to 14, like, I, I don't, it's nowhere near as cool as my dad used to be a football player or my dad's retired. Like, just talk about the things that are just happening currently. And I think that, like, that to me, it just, it feels like it would just be boring to just have him around. Like, why have him around if he's not going to be a special dad? You know what I'm saying? It's not about the, like, the just present be a day dad. just <laughs> hanging out with dad. It's about the fact that, like, playing football is a very dangerous thing to do, especially right. when you have huge, like, muscle-bound men running at you trying to knock you down every two seconds. Like I said, this is two take weeks my chances. On the show. Odds are he'll be fine. He's been fine this whole time except for that one year. Yeah, I think his then, kids will be like, eh. And then, but then 10 years from now, is he going to be fine? That's It's not mm-hmm. about, like, a broken He's leg. He's literally getting it's younger, more... Cassidy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm glad, you got, I'm, I'm glad that you became Tom Brady's doctor. Um, sure. Hold, hold on, on one know, second. Overnight. What's yes. up, Alabaster? Is he? Izzy, did you just really imagine Benjamin Brady being like, Dad, you're kind of boring now. Go be the goat or get out of this household. Yes. Yeah, really, I mean, how much really does he that? really remember? I mean, the guy's been playing forever. He's won Super Bowls forever since before they can remember. Like, yeah, I think it's got to build more in the, uh, you know, I think, I think, yeah, I think it's more, it's boring. It's boring. He has three a, kids. A there's dad. a lot of, there's a lot of, like, recitals. To, yeah, a lot of life to live. Practices you know I mean? yeah. and... You know, I think I'm sure he'll be happy to see his dad drive him to his whatever, like, flute lesson. And the kids, like, you know. really think that's happening? Yes! Like, there's got to be a whole security team wherever Tom Brady goes. Like, it's going to be a disaster for him to just show up at a soccer game. I don't think he's living that kind of life with his kids. No, I I don't either. Yeah, that's, I I don't either. He's rich enough where you don't have to, you don't have to have that anymore because all the other people you're around are mega rich as well. So you don't need that. You know what (laughs) I'm saying? That's how he's operating. What's next? Awesome. Next topic. We're moving on to NBA news. And our first, and our question is, what does the C.J. McCollum trade mean for both the Blazers <laughs> and the Pelicans? <laughs> okay. For those of you on Transaction Twitter, I mean, pardon me, but this must be the greatest day of your life because two oh. quasi-relevant teams, not really, with two stars that people know, are trading 19,000 people between the various teams with players that don't exist. Cass, I'm going to you first. Please explain to me why. Come on, this you don't know Didi Luzada? Yeah, it is kind of strange. Usually you see teams like in different places, um, like in standings, kind of uh, improve their separate situation, like one trying to get better, one trying to tank, but um, they're basically like boarding each other in the standings. So uh, I, I just, first of all, pour one out to the great CJ and Dame backcourt that just wasn't good enough. Um and, you know, it was a fun ride, but it seems like this trade was like two years too late to, you know, like we've been waiting for this to happen. Um, I'm still digesting the actual trade. As far as from the Pelican side, you know, everything begins and ends with uh, Zion. Um, and we're still waiting for Zion to begin his damn season. Um, so, I, you know, I, they wanted a veteran guard. He's the actual president of the Players Association. So he has leadership qualities. Random fact, uh, me and CJ McCollum had the same birthday, so Virgo vibes. Nothing has <laughs> about that. anything to do with that. But, um, <laughs> but I will say the Pelicans, they started 1-12 to start this season, um, and now they're in, like, playing game contention. Willie Green, beloved by all. Now he has a guy in CJ, um, you know, who will buy in. I, we'll see. Like I said, it begins and ends with Zion. Zion, B.I., CJ, okay, um, right, I, I, I guess. <laughs> Blazer side, Damian Lillard. This trade to me, Cassidy, had a lot of like, 
initially had a lot of like frontier and spirit airlines merging yes. kind of energy yes, it was just yes, like yes. okay ah, they're yes, in the game but are they really in the game and so but then it's the sort of trade that just makes you look a little closer right and the one thing the most shocking thing i read today and i don't know if it's just because like you know early morning trade i don't know if it was that early but the pelicans with the idea of being in playoff contention it just like immediately made me like like open like a newspaper and just like make sure that that was correct like they're in the uh, in the contention for a play in spot yeah. and it just goes to show you how top heavy the western conference is because you know 6 7 8 right. 9 10 is just kind of a mess but it's just it's wow it's eye opening it's also eye opening that you have an interim gm basically in portland doing this fire sale over here because they seem yeah. like they're getting rid of a lot of people um and maybe dame lillard is next which is uh, super interesting it also makes you look at the numbers of josh hart and cj mccollum efficiency wise cj mccollum's not going to give you you know 49 50 percent shooting the way josh hart is but obviously as a guard that can create, a guard that can score up to 23 points a game, I don't think you think of Josh Hart that way. Can McCollum do that for you? Yeah. Has he been sort of misplaced next to Damian Lillard? Should he be a lead guard that can do more with a guy like Brandon Ingram and Zion Williamson in front of him? All great questions. And so all things that you have to sort of look a little deeper in this trade. Now, of course, it all comes down to Zion. Can Zion be a part of a big three if he can't actually play? I don't know. But, I mean, obviously no, not. That team but is with still him Zion. And Brandon Ingram that team is, and McCollum. Is Zion. Pretty good trio. Yeah, that team is. Uh, can you put the list of players that made the exchange up? Can you can you can you put that list up again? The, the total amount of humans that are in the transaction here, plus the picks. Where are the picks coming from? I don't understand. If you're moving this many people, why do you need to throw in extra players that do not exist? I, look, uh, I mean, okay, I saw this, and all of a sudden, like. My whole feed started going crazy. Oh, this, that, a third. Don't cheat the grind, all this other stuff from Dame. But I mean, like, look, I'm sorry. Until one of these teams does something, wake me when this happens. Because as far as I'm concerned, this to me is a trade between guys that all maybe could be something we don't even know yet. It's it's kind of sad because I feel like there's this window era of the we talk about all the guys that didn't get rings because of Jordan. We're not going to think about all the teams that just never developed because they were either chasing the Warriors or trying right. to be like LeBron and just ended up being in the league for 10 years with kind of nothing to show well, does for. This, does this make it interesting for you? If you think about the idea, you know, people floating around C.J. McCollum and something else and some picks for Ben Simmons, and now all you're getting for C.J. McCollum is Josh Hart and some picks. Like, do you think the no, idea no, no. of a Andy Dame Lillard Alexander to Philadelphia... Walker. I, that that's not a that that's a piece that right like, but that, i'm talking big names right so if like right if we were talking like if if you if portland's going to not give away cj mccollum but give him away for less than a superstar right then you would think that maybe they'll be in the in the you know interested okay in uh dame lillard for ben simmons deal maybe this is something that gets that I mean, actually done you, you know saw, maybe you saw because you see steve nash not, though, is that that basically portland's plan like this fire sale is like a last ditch effort to, you know, like tell Dame that they're doing something. They're going to reshape the roster around Dame, 21 million trade exception, potentially 60 million salary cap space this summer. I'm saying a bunch of words. I really don't understand. Try one more Multiple time. Right? You think Dame's and... going to be down with that? Right. I know he just no, signed the No, but they got to but... try what they, what they were, they, they, oh. they were, he wasn't going to be down with what was currently happening with the Blazers. I will say like, I, you know, they like they're gonna try to get a big piece. That that's that's the thing. It's if they can get a big piece for Damian, because right now the Norm Powell's, Robert Covington, C.J. McCollum's of the world was not enough for 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 Damian Lillard. I do feel a little bad for for Chauncey Billups because you know he's pretty much set up to fail right now. Um, he yeah. is getting an advanced lesson in MBA coaching, um, but it is like right now. What they're communicating to Damian Lillard is we're trying. We're going to try to make it work. It wasn't working, getting little pieces here and there. We got to go big for you. Um, and they're going to test his loyalty. Like, But to just decide to get rid of just everybody when you have a Damian Lillard, was, when that's like the type of guy that people go out to try to get is a Damian Lillard. Um, this, is, this, is, this is what you do. You... <sighs> I you know, know, clear the deck. I don't and try know that I understand that though. 
As to quote the great Ben Khalis, what is the reason? Who are the actual players you are trying to acquire? You can't just theoretically say we're going to retool, I reshape agree. this, that, and third. Who are the actual individuals? There's only a certain amount of people in the NBA who are good. What are I you agree. actually talking about? You know what I'm saying? This is where I don't understand how you can even use the term re, you know, retool at this point. You've been retooling for 10 years. What are we talking about here? You're the Blazers. Like, I don't, I don't get it. It is a frustrating discussion because yeah. it's centered around, well, if you actually just extrapolate, it's kind of includes a Zion Williamson, a guy that he hasn't seen play all year. And if you extrapolate, like I said, a Ben Simmons, a guy who you haven't seen right. play all I'm year. Right. I'm like, so I don't even. kind of like, yeah, what's happening here? Right. What's up, Charlie? So, I mean, I feel like, uh, yeah, I guess the Blazers could say they're trying to rebuild on the fly and put a start. Dame finally won out. They gave up two picks to get Robert, two first round picks to get Robert Covington a year ago. They sold low on him. They traded Gary Trent Jr., who's one of the best shooters and a good wing for the Raptors, for Norm Norman Powell, Powell. And they sold low on him. They gave up Larry Nance Jr., who was a stretch five, who worked with Dame. And they sold low on him with this trade. And CJ, who they could have traded for Ben Simmons a few months ago and sold low on him. So, like, if you're Dame, you Cassidy's have to finally point, This is out, their right? version of trying. This is their version of trying, and it's not great. I didn't he's say seen they it. were like, trying. He's seen good. what all these picks have turned into, and <laughs> so while, why are they going to give him another really try? So if I'm Dame, it's like, all right, include me in this. Just get a huge haul for me. Get me out of here because this doesn't seem to be working. The decision makers aren't making the right decisions. That's a new motto for this show: trying good. What's next? Yes. <laughs> all right, moving on. We got a little bit more NBA news. All right, the Lakers are playing the Bucks tonight. As we know, it's been a bit of a struggle for Russell Westbrook. And our question is, what do you expect Frank Vogel to do with Russ tonight? I'll start here because, I, I mean, it's, it's, it's almost like if I walk outside of my window and I just open the, the window, I will hear Westbrook takes just by natural wind blowing around Los Angeles. This is what everybody talks about all the time. What's Russell Westbrook going to do? This, that, and the third. Um, here's what I think he should do. <laughs> Frank Vogel on benching Westbrook in this. Hopefully the response is that the player plays better. That player. Okay. Wait, here's is what he I not think, even saying his name? He won't even say the man's name. Here's what I think they should actually do. But here's mm-hmm. what I think what will actually happen. The best case scenario for Russell Westbrook is this. You put him on the bench and you tell him you want triple doubles, but none of them, none of the categories can involve points. That's what you tell him. They better be rebounds. They better be assists. They better be blocks and they better be steals. And that's how you're getting on the court. It's not going to be throwing up mid-range bricks. It's not going to be out of control, uh, you know, in, in transition layups that should have been dunked. It's not, it can't be that. However, what I think is going to happen is he's going to put him on the bench and he's just going to end up trying to be the leader of whatever their second unit is. And they're going to figure out that they're not that good overall as a team. Cassidy, what do you think? I mean, I think the focus should be Anthony Davis and LeBron James. <laughs> like, I just, I mean, I get it. Yeah. I get the conversation around Russell Westbrook, but I think the focus should be getting Anthony Davis back in form, which he looked pretty darn good on Saturday, and giving LeBron James moments to rest, not playing 40 minutes in his first game back from a knee issue to barely beat the Knicks. But, you know, I digress. Like, I, I, I understand that the drama and feeding into the drama – of uh, Russell Westbrook um, is something that is consuming this team and consuming the the talk around this team and is a nas- it, it is a problem, okay? Um, but I, I think the way that you fix this problem is focus on the guys who are going to win you a championship to begin with. And, you know, having Anthony Davis back – is the key to winning a championship. Anthony Davis is going to be the key for the Lakers to win the championship. He always has been. It has not been um, Russell Westbrook. So what do I think that they do? I don't know. Like, I, I, I make LeBron James point guard. Make Anthony Davis the five. Like, I, I, I just think with Russ, he's a very emotional guy. And the more you feed into this talk around him and him being and his issues being so like the, the number one problem on this team, the more they're going to be the number one problem on this team. Yeah. Well, um, Cass, I, hear me out on this one. Cause I think part of the issue is it's, it's Russ and his play and his position, frankly, because if you're going to say, Hey, you, you don't can't have the ball in your hands as much. We need to put the ball in LeBron's hands and maybe we'll post you up or something. Well, he's also a rebounding point guard that wants to get it and rip and go. 
And if he's doing that, then he's got the ball in his hands. And frankly, that's probably the best scenario for them because, you know, that's a fast break situation. You don't have to settle into the, the half court. And so you can't just say, hey, be a complimentary player, play off the ball and not expect him to have to take some of these shots. And I think this is I'm where, more. you know, you can create you can create excuses for Russell Westbrook, not you, but people can create excuses for Russell Westbrook. But some of this is true. Like, he's been the guy that's been there every game. So he's been the guy that, every A, game. had to make the biggest sacrifice when games. he started. Right. And then when had to make the biggest adjustments when LeBron's out, when AD's out, right. etc. And then you had the one game where he didn't play with either of them uh, uh, against the Hornets, and he scored yeah. 30 points in the second half, right. the most by a Laker since in a half since Kobe's final game. And so the answer is just, hey, well, Frank Vogel, it's not like he has other options. It's not like they're going to trade him. He's got to play him in the times where he's supposed to play him. Hope that you get the more efficient or better version of Russell Westbrook. And if it's a close game late and you're seeing the inefficient version, do what you've done. Take him out of the I game. I just don't even and think the frustration is If those end up in wins, then nobody's going to complain. I think the frustration is again? his defense. I think the frustration is his defense yes, and a, lack of lot. trying. Yep. And, and to me, that plays into his just mercurial – did that come out right? Mercurial. Sort of. Tough. It's a tough one. Thank you. It's a tongue twister <laughs> for sure. Um, just the uh, essence that he is. <clears throat> and that's why I'm saying, like, they got to stop feeding into this. Like, I was want, when you, I don't know if you guys saw post game, and maybe I'm also contributing to the problem here, when LeBron was telling Malika, you know, he was talking about accountability, and he said, it's all about taking accountability for your own actions every game. If you want to change, you have to look yourself in the mirror and demand more out of yourself, and it'll trickle down to the rest of the ball club. Maybe that he was just talking about everybody, but it was a like it, it, it definitely felt like point, <laughs> pointed well, at Russ. Look, um, defensively, Cassie, like this team's just never things. been together defensively, so you can't know, just blame he's, Russell he's Westbrook. A, no, I know, but it's I'm not saying that, but um, that he guys, it, it, hold on, it's guys, the body hold language, on, hold on. it's the buy in, and to hold me, on. that's yes. emotions. Uh, everyone always talks about defense being a mental thing, and to, like. The, the the missing the backboard completely and 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 the turnovers like I, I don't feel like Russell Westbrook has forgotten how to play basketball I just I feel like he's in his own head like Anthony Davis and and LeBron James keep saying about him so if they keep feeding into that narrative it's only gonna get it worse sorry Clint. yeah but it's okay but I mean that's 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 correct except they're not the only ones the crowd was yelling no when he put up a shot on his home court. Like, this must be addressed on a larger level. And that's like, I'm sorry, that's part of this. That's why LeBron has to say something. He wants to man in the mirror or any other Michael Jackson song you want. I'm just saying that, like, you got to do something. And there's no point anymore in which we can kind of hide this behind. Well, Westbrook's not really a factor. Westbrook is kind of just the third guy. He's goofing off. Malik Monk is filling in great. Yeah, he is. But again... If the people that are paying can notice it with their own eyeballs, I'm telling you, you're going to have to do something. This is so what problem. do you do? I told so you, you what you, you do. You, you make sure. I think you make sure. I, I literally think that you say, Russ, Westbrook, I want a triple double out of you, and it doesn't involve points. That's what I'm saying. You know what I mean? You might get there. You know what I mean? But you better Look, move I mean, this is, to me, it's all command. roster construction. Like, this yeah. is a team with one, one of its main guys in its prime in Anthony Davis. The other one's past his prime, although LeBron obviously is still great, but still past his prime. And you need a lot, a lot of energy around that if you're going to make up for it. And they just don't really have that, you know. Malik Monk, not enough, you know. So uh, I, I, it's going to come down to, you know, us talking about Russell, Russell Westbrook until they're eliminated from the playoffs and seeing what his numbers is. But in the end, it's never going to be he's the main reason why this is happening. It's, it's the entire picture. I mean, Malik Monk is still rocking the two-level high top, you know what I'm saying, as well. That's a great look. I love that. Very throwback 90s house party style. What's up, Kravitz? I got a question. Why? Okay, so we saw this a couple years ago with Melo when he was in Houston, and they basically just sent him home. Why is it so hard to bench Russ? I mean, I, I, hmm. I just think it's one of those things where that's where the human interaction element of what being a basketball team is. Like, just having that guy sitting on the bench – is, is kind of difficult depending on sort of game situations. I mean, we saw this happen in the Knicks game where he came out of the game in a crucial part. and He didn't even sit down. He was just standing there the entire time. And, like, I, I'm not saying that sort of intimidation is a factor, but I do think there's just that interpersonal part where it's hard to just sit a guy like that on the bench because the potential, it's, 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 it's just yeah. not easy, you know? It's because there's no definitive answer. It's because there's no nothing that says, yes, this is going to work. 
if we do that. Right. And then if you do do that, your first inst instinct is going to say, okay, they're pulling the plug on this. This is probably not going to work. Let's just cross our fingers. If it, and then if you bench them and then it doesn't work and it's, it's like, all right, this is the end of this. We can't, we're, we have no hope. And if you're going to try that, you're going to try that far enough ahead of the trade deadline where you're just going to, you know, have to find something, make something happen around trade deadline because, or the second half is just going to be a disaster. So I, I, it's one of those you have to have a planned out the way that's going to work, but B have something that's definitively better. And, you know, whether you say about the type of players they are, THT, Malik Monk, whomever, um, I don't know if there's anything that's like that you're definitely going to say, hey, this is this is obviously going to work. And Russell, we're just hanging on to him because of pride. Right. And I, and like I said, I don't, I, I think given the way the season is played out with, you know, LeBron missing 17 games, AD missing 21, there's this like glimmer of hope that maybe they just need to work out kinks and play more with each other. Um, that has gotten us to this part of like, you know, going into the season is like, this is not going to work. But hey, you got three future Hall of Famers, so like maybe it can work itself out. But it's been a really weird year for them, and quote everybody. But um, it like I I think the how we're gotten to this point is the fact that they are keep are holding on to that hope that maybe they'll figure it out by just playing with each other and the guys being healthy because it's a lot of talent. forget about Carmelo, four future Hall of Famers. Right, but we're not talking. Yes. <laughs> How about Dwight? Five? But Carmel. Carm <laughs> Dwight. Oh, Dwight. Five. Dwight. Five. Wow. Wow. How okay. is this team losing? <laughs> it's, 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 I'm telling you guys. It is because they're closer to the Hall of Fame, all of them, right. than they are their peaks. <laughs> the draft. Because yeah. they're all eligible somehow. And exactly. still yes, they're all eligible somehow and still playing. What's that? I think you're going to play a game of what are the chances? Nice. The the game where we show you a video and you tell us the chances. The first one, though, we actually have two sound bites from Joel Embiid. The first one is after game series last year, and the next one is yesterday on radio. And our question is, what are the chances Joel Embiid didn't really call Ben Simmons out after getting knocked out of the playoffs last season? I don't know how to say it, um, but I thought the turning point was just, you know, we had uh, – an open shot and you know we miss uh, we made one free throw and uh, we missed the other and then they came down and scored uh, and uh, we didn't get a good pos uh, possession on the other end and Trey came back and he made a three and then from there uh, down four uh, and then I go I uh, on me I turn the ball over uh, and try to you know make something happen uh, from the perimeter uh, and um, but uh, I thought that was a turning point. Izzy, your thoughts? Wait, don't we have another clip? I thought so. I was just no, vamping I in the middle. Hard, uh, <laughs> this summer to try to improve in every facet of my game. And, you know, and I know a lot of guys, a lot of other guys did that. You can look at the improvement, you know, Tyrese's made, uh, Tobias has made, you know, every other guy on the team. So, I think at the end of the day, uh, you got to have some self-awareness. Uh, the notion about, you know, uh, you know, like guys getting called out and, you know, whatever, I just don't, I just don't see it that way. Like you look at the comments that were made, you look at the way I spoke about it. I didn't call anybody specifically. I just said, you know, I called out a bunch of events that happened. I mean... Listen. Did he I'll just tell say you the player got to play better? Yes, exactly. <laughs> but like, I, I, I'm not gonna lie. This is uh, this is relitigating a case that was already <laughs> far too much drama in it. I mean, look, who called out who? What was being said about potential? I think I've said this a million times. The most important of these callouts was Doc. Rivers. It was not player to player. It was what Doc said. That changed everything. The rest of this stuff is just internal scuttlebutt, and I'm not changing any of my opinions. Thank you. There's the quote. Doc Rivers, after Game 7 on whether or not Simmons could be a championship point guard, quote, I don't know. That is the vital, vital fulcrum of this entire situation, in my opinion, Izzy. What if he just meant he could be a championship small forward? 
Oh, see, maybe he should have used his words better. But I, I, this is the did. most tame, like, call out. Like, if this, okay, so right. we're not going to know for sure until Ben actually talks about it, but we've heard people get called out so much harder after playoff performances, etc. So that, it just feels like it, it, it can't possibly be the main reason why he is that upset with an organization, especially, like, most of the time, you give that stuff a couple of days, and it'll, you know, teams will right. get past it or guys will get past it. You're talking about months. You're talking about another full season where Joel Embiid probably can't even, like, recreate those emotions if he wanted to because they were so far back, you know. So if that is the reason that, you know, Ben is sort of holding out, really doesn't want to ever be a part of this organization again, I think it's, it's as Shaq said, it's a bit crybaby-ish. Um, but I actually don't like, if you were to have just taken, taken Joel Embiid's uh, answer out and just replayed the game, it's the exact same thing because all he did was give you a play-by-play. And yeah. he just put, you know, my, when I, when he put an eye on it, when he said I'd turn the ball over, but everything else was just the play. So in terms of call-outs, mm, and then his response on the radio, I thought was pretty, I think Embiid's handled this pretty darn well. I, I agree. Time. Embiid has turned into a basketball ambassador writ large, dealing with all this nonsense the whole time. He has really upped his persona, I think, in terms of what people view him like as a leader in Philly, Cassidy. Oh, yeah. I mean, he absolutely ste- he stepped up as far as being a leader of this team. He has actually he has no choice anymore because, you know, like his running mate, his other all star player is not there. Um, and so I just think like it, what's the question? It's what are the chances Joel MB didn't really call Ben Simmons out? It depends on like how you describe call out like, you know, if you can call someone out. And it also be factual. Like he, he, like, he didn't have to say that, you know, we passed up a, a, a layup. Like, some people would, you know, err on the side of, hey, like, we always get mad at, at, at players for not telling us the truth or not, like, you know, oh, God. giving us, like, you know, <laughs> giving you us, like, uh, player speak, coach speak. <laughs> yes, exactly. There, um, he, okay, quickly, hold like, on. Kravitz put up the picture of, Ben Simmons passing the ball from directly under the I basket. Know. And that's yeah. what we're looking at right now. Go on, Cass. But but as far as like Joel saying that that he, he is he questioning whether that's the sole reason that Ben's not showing up? Um, no, because like the thing is, is that I think everyone understands that this has been something that was brewing. And then that was the boiling point. That was that that moment in in the playoffs and the the, the post game. Uh, comments afterwards that was the moment that like it was a straw that broke the camel's butt whatever cliche you want to throw at it it's it was all of the trade rumors leading up to it it was the 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 relationship like uh, so much focus on do these two get along like it was building for two years um all the criticism that he received for you know his injury stuff like it like to say that his comments are the reason why like the, like he's not showing up is like yeah. not understanding the whole situation. And this is what worries me about Ben Simmons because I remember being asked about him when he first started and hey the jumper's not there and I remember saying like man look I'm not worried about this guy like his ability yeah. he seems like he's got the right mentality it's cool but everything that's been a problem he seems to go the other direction with it or frankly run away from it the jumper mm-hmm. it didn't look this bad at the beginning then it looked worse and then he just stopped taking them okay taking them, uh, right? this this Free whole throws. idea of you know. Most of these elite athletes and these, you know, top level performers, when somebody's criticizing them, said, I'll show you. Instead, he just says, ah, you're probably right. I'm just going to go do other things. Same thing with, uh, you know, with this Joel Embiid stuff. Like if he felt like Joel Embiid was calling him out, of all people to be able to go in every single day in practice and every single game to show up, like go ahead and do that. Show him that you are the reason that this team is what it can be or, you know, can be what it can be. And then. Yeah, just literally running away from from this whole situation and not being yeah. face to face with it. I think it, it concerns me as you know somebody who thought he was you know LeBron 2.0, and now it's just like yeah. it, it might just be all up here. And that's something that we don't want to put on somebody without you know that voice giving that person giving voice to it. And so he seems to be pretty adamant that it's just hey, it's a basketball thing, it's a personal situation. Maybe it is some mental health stuff, but. For the most part, we're just guessing. And we've been guessing all year, and I know a lot of people are When he didn't it. join the Australian team for the World Cup as well, when he could have, that's when I knew something was really wrong, well beyond just the Sixers. I was like, wow, you're not even doing that? You're choosing to run with your homeboys in a gym as opposed to potentially represent your country and work on a game in a different way? That told me something else was very wrong. Here's what we're going to do for my number. 
I'm going to say an integer that I want to know if you can write it down. This would be null set because this isn't really like the exact qualification, sort of like getting an incomplete on a report card. Like, I don't really think this is what everything is involved. You know how to write null set. I think set. you're going to get a drawing of a middle finger for your number. No, I'm going to go 99.9%. It's, it's, it's a zero with a line no through it is there. what it is. Hmm. <clears throat> I would have had no idea what that was. You don't know what null set is? <laughs> you guys didn't take math in high school? There it is. Yes. Null set. Sort of. All yes. Right. Yes. There you go. More in the middle. But. More in the middle. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Izzy, what's your By the way, that idea that, that Ben was mad because Joel called him out, even though he didn't call out Joel after losing to the Raptors, if you look at the numbers, there was no reason to call Joel. They were better with him on the floor than they were with Ben Simmons on the floor. I can't so believe really we're still wasn't. talking about that series at this point in time. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Do you all have I ended a There's lot a of relationships. Yeah, it's true. 19 million. <laughs> That's how much Ben Simmons has been fine. That's my answer. 19 million. That's the other thing. Like, you're running away from this and they're taking money from you. Like, that's a double whammy there. Like, it's just lose-lose for Ben Simmons at this point. 99.99%. <laughs> I'm not writing that down. I'm moving on. <laughs> All right. I mean, you wrote a nine for Cassidy. You just you just knew you weren't going to get called out. Cassidy, did you notice how he writes his nines? This, is, this, is, this has become Izzy's whole pet project, is watching Why? What's Charlie. wrong with his nines? He writes his nines from the bottom <laughs> the up, as opposed to the loop first and then down. Yeah. So it's unorthodox to say My that. My nine kind of looks like a, a P. I yeah. think that's the way it's supposed no, to look. No, it doesn't. I, uh, pushing nines. Nines. Pushing nines. What I'm, is going on? We are real, so real talk, I almost, I almost <laughs> got held back in kindergarten because my handwriting was so bad. It was a motor skills issue. I'm moving really? on. Do they even teach handwriting anymore yeah. in kindergarten? I was precocious. Um, Yo, yeah. all the time we spent on cursive, and we yeah. only use it for our signatures now. Which I don't. You couldn't read my signature <laughs> if you tried. Do you print your signature? I was, a, I was a graffiti artist, so my handwriting is generally just more stylized and block-like in general. Huh? Yeah. That was your initial career, graffiti artist? I mean, that's what, that was my, my interest in art is just a general topic in the world came through street art, and that's what I practiced, that's what I studied, that's what I care about. Yeah. That's still, like, like, a big part of my five ethos. Lives. Yeah, that's a big part of my ethos. Like, you want me to write my name down? Here, I'll find a pen. Yeah, I yeah, carry on. I I'm, I'll be back. I get annoyed. Carry on. I'll be back. I heard a comedian do a bit about this, but I definitely worked a long time in elementary and junior high uh, on my signature, only now to have everything e-signed, and it's like, it's just really aggravating. I mean, how long? Can I? How is your How is your handwriting, Izzy? Because mine is terrible. Like I always wished uh, I had that it's bubble like handwriting, like all the other girls, but mine is like a combination of you know, bubble handwriting and just terrible, like, like 10 year old boy handwriting. Um, yeah. let's see. Charlie was so close to laying down that next topic. And then here we go on a completely terrible tangent about handwriting. No, I, I'm very interested. Left. I mean, I'm actually, maybe I'm trying to get some more artwork for our, Debatable. our new house. So what's the name of the oh, show, man? See? You're one of those artistic people maybe who can make anything look good. Yeah. I have great handwriting. End of story. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, should you be forget printing out these boards, Charlie? Just have Clinton send you <laughs> right? a bunch of these boards. Yeah, that's that was that's what my that was fantastic. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, I wasn't, nine, I, wasn't, I wasn't lying. Shut up, Izzy. I wasn't lying. I mean, you know, it's something I've spent a lot of time on, so therefore it's quality. That's how it works. Right. Wait, can you What's, can you put that up to the to the camera one more time? Yeah. Can we just change it and make it the new uh, logo? It looks. I, mean, I, I will I say wanna... one, I love it. one qualm you did spell debatable wrong, but it's fine. yeah, you know. a little bit too many e's in there. How is that? How... And also looks like debatable, but oh whatever, debatable. Yeah, you know. All right. sorry. Yeah, <laughs> debatable. All right, last topic. You guys. get the idea. <laughs> last topic. We have another soundbite. What are the I'm chances that OBJ is too cordial with Joe Burrow ahead of the Super Bowl? I think if you you look up cool in the dictionary, there's a picture of him and some Cartier shades. He's going to be one of the greats, I feel like. What does too cordial mean here? What are, what's the concern? They're, 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 they're label mates. You know, they went to the same school. Like, I don't know. What, I see what, no lies either. What's the problem? Yeah, what, I don't understand. Who, who has an issue with this, Alabaster? If they were to play on the opposite sides of the ball and have to face each other, like if he was a DB saying this, I'd be a little concerned because, you know. Those guys live on just that overdose of confidence and, and making sure that they don't compliment anybody. With this one, I don't really have a big, you know, I mean, it's not like he is 
married to or has any sort of long relationship with any one quarterback outside of Baker. Um, and so it's not like he's insulting anybody by saying this. And you kind of want to soften up the competition, right? You don't want to give them uh, the old bulletin board material. Like, I don't really have a problem with this. I think uh, I don't think anybody's disagreeing with him either. So it's probably just because it's OBJ saying this. Because like if uh, who's the other receivers on there? Not Cooper Cup. But if uh, Higby was saying this, I'd be like, OK. Wouldn't think twice about it. Yeah. I mean, this is media day. Like we're really like. You know, it the is? questions that are th- Yeah, wasn't this like wow, a media flies. day uh <laughs> Yes, this was it. I don't media know. Day, media day like... happened on Zoom off site. Exactly. Was boring. You're yeah. you're you're doing the Super Bowl in LA. Let's not get into a COVID discussion, but I'm just saying why not have them outside? You're having them on Zoom, but it's neither here nor there. Well, there's, hold on, there's um, a reason why. You know the reason, right? No, the Tell reason me. is because the Bengals had a pep rally send off and 30,000 people showed up at their stadium and the Bengals were there. It was amazing. You didn't see this? Yo, they filled their actual park or their actual stadium to have a send off pep rally. And like the players Are these were pep there. rallies new? I mean, like, if didn't, you that, didn't the Rams the... have it at a high school and they didn't even fill up that high school? Like, yeah, stadium? but Cincinnati hasn't been at the Super Bowl in a lifetime. You know what I'm saying? This is a kind of different matter. So, like, they showed up. Then the team, I, I mean, I actually thought it was a pretty smart move because I'm sure a lot of those people aren't going to be able to make the game. You know what I'm saying? It was pretty cool. So, I, I didn't think there was very many things that I like less than a parade, but a send off. Is, is definitely not on my leg. I'm not going to go be like, hey, guys, let's go get wasted and say goodbye to all of the players. No, like, I'm going to save my getting wasted for the they, actual game. Direct your hater That's the reason they held season. media day? Um, no, actually? I'm saying, I'm saying like, I think that between the two As things, a member of the media, I say out. that's a whole lot of BS. I don't know, man. I thought I'd that was mad. a pretty cool idea for Cincinnati. No, media day is a whole lot of BS. You never get anything good out of that thing, except for, you know, random proposals from people. I agree, but at the same time, it's uh, the, the, like, what else are you doing? Like, you need to have content to fill up two weeks worth of, you know, talk about the Super Bowl. And Media Day is at least something that you can get some sort of content. Um, let me, let me explain to you what's It's hard to get out of Zoom. You let know how many times I've you. raised my hand and I didn't even get called on? So <laughs> what's going on here is that media members are running around Los Angeles. They could not possibly care less about these two football teams until Friday at the earliest. You got shots and sets all over town that are totally unrelated and are just using the backdrop as what their content is, which is fine. That's why it's Los Angeles. Cassidy, if you need That's more why. things to do, like there's this one podcast that Duncan Robinson hosts. It's called The Long Shot. Uh, speaking of Duncan Robinson, have you been noticing the okay. heat lately? No. Yesterday, no. I didn't even get a chance no. to, to watch and the heat the game. Show. Oh, I indeed. asked Alexa, hey, I said, hey, Alexa, Clint. what was the heat score Wait. today? You know what she said? Literally, she said the heat demolished the Washington Wizards 121 hey, to 101. I she said demolished. She's all in Team on the culture. culture. Ooh, that is- <laughs> Put it on a T-shirt, Clinton. Send it over. Everybody Team here in the culture. debate room's desk needs one. <laughs> there we oh, go. Oh, hey, hey, beautiful hey. that is. I think we're going to have to pixelate that. We can't get that. I will write your name, Mail. I'll send it to you. Bye, everybody. Send it in the mail. So I can see more of that (laughs) great writing. Follow us at Debatable. If you're lucky, you can follow me, and I might write your name too, kiddos. Let's bring back mail, and let's bring back curses.